Hi, want to welcome you this morning. Thanks again for joining us. Um, um, our announcements this morning are not much different, basically the same stuff, but we do want to encourage you to swing by on Sunday mornings while we're having the curbside service. It's between 8.30 and 10 on Sunday mornings. Um, come by and say hi, because we would love to see you. Also, the youth and the um, kids are still doing all their, their lessons and their Bible studies and stuff online, so make sure that you catch on that. And I mentioned last week that there's going to be a virtual camp. There's going to be one one for the kids and one for the youth. Those are both going to be in July. So call the church office or uh, check our website for updates on that. And um, it's it's not as good as going to camp, but it's better than nothing. So we're really grateful that our district is, is doing this for our kids. Well, I don't know if you know it, but today is Flag Day. So this day in uh, 1777, our flag was incorporated and made our flag. And so um, I just thought that was a fun bit of trivia. And um, as we go to the Lord and prayer and um, in praying for our offerings. And so I want to lift up our nation because just like, wow, there's just so much stuff going on. And the only answer is Jesus. And so and I, I want to remind you and thank you for your offerings and remind you that you can pay online. You can mail in your payments. You can swing by at the curbside service and drop them off there. And I thank you for your support for all of these months. And I know the Lord is blessing you. So let's go before the Lord and lift up our nation and thank him for all that he has done for us and his protection over our country. So Jesus, we come before you this morning. And Lord, we just lift up America to you. We lift up the, all of its leaders. And Father, we ask for your help. You, we know that your word tells us that what the enemy has met for evil, Lord, you will turn for good. And that is our prayer and that is our declaration and that is our confidence. And as we cry out to you, your word promises us that you hear our cry. And so we pray for wholeness. We pray for restitution. We pray for restoration. Lord, we pray for wisdom for our leaders. We pray for um, just your forgiveness and your grace on our country. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for providing for us. And thank you for all that you do through us through the blood of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, Cheryl Mandevinder is going to be reading scripture for us. In church, our scripture today is found in the book of 2 Chronicles. After all that Hezekiah had so faithfully done, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came and invaded Judah. He laid siege to the fortified cities, thinking to conquer them for himself. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of the king of Assyria and the vast army with him. For there is a greater power with us than with him. With him is only the arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people gained confidence from what Hezekiah, the king of Judah, said. Second Chronicles 32, 1, 7, and 8. Thanks, Cheryl. That was great. Now, here's Mark. Well, hello, church. Hey, I want to commend you for watching online. Uh, I'm sure it's not that easy to be at home when you have so many distractions and so many other things that you could be watching, but... but uh, uh, there you sit, watching, waiting for a word from the Lord, and uh, prayerfully we'll deliver today. Um, I want to talk for just a second about some of the stuff going on. You know, I don't want to make, I don't want to, I don't want to turn, uh, talk about current events and politics too much, uh, because you get plenty of that out, out, you know, on your, uh, on all the news cycles and Twitter and Facebook, all that stuff, you see it constantly. But I do want to make a statement. Um, you know, given all that's gone on the last couple of weeks uh, and, and the, the protests that, that were, some of them were peaceful, but then some of the rioting and looting and, and the, the different things that happened and also uh, the, the cries against our police departments, uh, against our many, many um, uh, wonderful men and women that serve us and that protect us. Uh, to serve and protect is what many, many police um, uh, cars have uh, and, and what many, many police departments believe and try to do is to serve us and protect us. Uh, but now there's this movement of defunding the police, get rid of the police. Uh, we've seen things that have happened in, in Minneapolis with the, with the city council there and, and in other areas. And, and it's frightening. It's frightening. I mean, uh, I, I just I, cu I couldn't imagine living in a world without 
police departments without honest, good police officers, men and women, serving and protecting us. Uh, if you're in trouble, who are you going to call? Because I don't think Ghostbusters are showing up. And so, you know, we, we, need, to, we need to pray for our police. Uh, they, by and large, serve and protect. Now, are there some, are there some uh, corrupt cops? Absolutely. You know, I've known in my life a couple of public school teachers. One was a private school teacher at a Christian high school who molested children. I've known of a couple uh, teachers that have molested kids. But never once did, I, did it even enter my mind that all teachers are molesters. That never entered my mind. Uh, I've known and heard of priests that have molested kids. But I don't believe that all priests, and certainly not all ministers, molest children. And so it never, it never occurs to me to lump all people into one category. I, I think that's wrong. Paul says in Romans chapter 14 that each of us are going to stand before God and give an account of our lives. Each of us. So God doesn't lump people together. He's going to judge us individually, but he's the judge. We're instructed in Luke chapter 6 by the words of Jesus himself, who said, do not judge or you will be judged. And so we have to be careful when making judgments about grouping or lumping a whole group of people into one. I know there's some Norwegian people that do some bad things. But trust me, there's some good Norwegians. I know of one. And so not all one race or one people group or one occupation because there's a couple bad apples doesn't mean all of them are bad. In fact, many of them are good. And so be cautious, be careful in making broad stroke judgments of people. It's wrong. God doesn't do that. He judges us individually for our own actions, not for the actions of others. And so I want to pray right now, and I want to ask you if you would bow your heads and pray for our land, pray for our country, pray for our police officers, and, and pray for peace. Pray, pray for peace of all people. So let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you for, for America, and she's hurting right now, Lord. This country is, is really hurting. It was founded on godly principles. It was founded with the right intentions, but we've made many mistakes. We've had, we've had many black marks over our, over our country over the years, and we've done so many things wrong, but we've also, we've also liberated. We've also done good things. And so, Father, in, in the midst of this time, during this time, when it seems like there's so much judgment and anger and, and, um, and denouncing people groups. Father, we pray for peace. We pray for unity. We pray, Lord God, for safety. And I want to pray for our police officers, the men and women who serve and protect us, that God, that you would serve and protect them as they serve and protect us. And Lord, for the, for the police officers out there that are wicked, that are evil, God, we pray that you deal with them. And just as, just as there are, are teachers out there that have molested, God, we pray you deal with them. But we never want to lump entire groups of people into one thing. Because it's wrong. You don't do that to us, and we thank you, Lord. I'm not going to be held responsible for other people's sin. I'm going to be held responsible for mine. But thank you, Jesus, for your forgiveness and the blood that washes us all. And so, Father, protect our land. Give our leaders of this country wisdom and not just wisdom, Lord, Courage. Courage to stand up and do the right thing. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So I want to talk to you today about uh, one more story on how to come through. And I think it's pretty appropriate for today because it has to do with coming through a siege. So, how to come through a siege. I was reading the other day and I thought, for sure now, I thought for sure we're going to be starting uh, a series on wisdom from, from uh, Proverbs chapter 9, verse 1, where wisdom has built her house and she's hewn out her seven pillars and, and how she's, she's fixed her meat. And she's prepared her wine, mixed her wine, and she's set her table. Uh, that's coming next week. Next week, we're going to start on the seven pillars of wisdom. We're going to be talking about our need for wisdom, what wisdom does for our life, and, and how if we don't have wisdom, then it doesn't matter what we have. But... 
Today, I was reading in scriptures a few days ago, and I saw this, this, these two words that just came off the page, and it was, it was in regards to Hezekiah, who was a king, and the words were, after all that Hezekiah had so faithfully done. And I thought, man, I mean, what? I, I would love for that to be said about me, that after all that I had faithfully done, and so, but, that, but the story doesn't end there. That's just the beginning of the story. This was after all that Hezekiah had so faithfully done. And so what I wanted to talk to you today about was how Hezekiah led Israel through a siege. And how do we come through a, a siege? So Hezekiah was this king in Israel. Um, probably... 50, 60 years before Israel was carried off into uh, captivity by Nebuchadnezzar. So he's one of the last, in fact, he was the last righteous king in Israel. He had done, although not perfect, because who is? He, he got it right. And that's all that can be said about any of us. You know, none of us are perfect, but did we get it right in the end? Did we get it right? And, and fa faithfully done, Hezekiah got it right. Uh, in the midst of widespread anarchy and chaos, sound familiar? Watch the news. In the midst of widespread anarchy and chaos, he stayed focused on God. You can too. Right now, you're watching at home, we're staying focused on God in the midst of all that's going on. And he even led Judah in the ways of the Lord. And, and you remember a few weeks ago, I talked about how when there was a righteous king, typically the people of the land were righteous. When there was an evil king, typically the people of the, of the land followed the king. And so he's leading Ju uh, Judah in the ways of the Lord. He restored the priesthood, which the priesthood had been dismantled by wicked king after wicked king prior to him. And, he, and then he, he reinstated uh, the, the worship of God, and they even celebrated the Passover. The Passover was something that was done every year, and it was this reminder that the death angel had passed over Israel and spared them. And how Jesus is our Passover, uh, because we, we put the, the, the blood of Jesus over the door frames of our life, the death angel will pass over us, and even though we will pass from this life, we will live forever in heaven with him. And so they, they began celebrating the Passover once again, something that wasn't done in years. It had been many, many years since there was a celebration of the Passover. That's how far Israel and Judah had fallen from God. And so he get it right. And yet, in spite of all this, 2 Chronicles chapter 32 says, verse 1 says this, After all that Hezekiah had so faithfully done, now here's the last part, the shocking part, the part that, that I couldn't understand. Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came and invaded Judah. That doesn't make sense. After all he'd so faithfully done, now he's under attack? Sound familiar? It doesn't seem fair to me. You would think, right? Done everything right. Restores the priesthood, worship of God, celebrating the Passover, leading Judah back to God. Now they're under attack? It's not fair. You'd think God would have their back and kept all the bad guys away. And that's this, this false notion that we have that if we, do, if we do everything right, then nothing but good will happen to us. Bad things happen in this world. It's just the way it is for good and bad. It rains on the just and the unjust. And so you'd think God would have their back. And, and, and especially, especially after all, they were faithful to God. And faithfulness should bring good times. But it didn't. It brought them an attack. Now this evil king of Assyria had surrounded them. And listen, literally, they were forced to shelter in place and surrender their land. They had no option. The king of Assyria, the Assyrians in, in Hezekiah's day, they, they were the big bullies on the block. They, they ruled most of the Middle East. Assyria, in, in, in today's terms, Assyria would have been, would have been most of Iraq and Turkey. That's where, that's where, that was the land of the Assyrians. The Assyrians were, were known for their barbaric ways. They were, they were incredible fighters. Uh, they were vicious. They were ruthless. Many times they never took slaves. They killed everyone. 
Uh, they were also feared because they had a lot of horses and they had a lot of iron chariots. And so iron chariots and horses in, in uh, when, when most of the most of the soldiers were on foot, they were tremendous weapons. And so the Assyrians were, were a, a brutal fighting force. The Assyrians were the ones who had destroyed much of Israel, the 10 tribes that were to the north of Judah. And now the nation, the 10 tribes of, of Israel were no more. They were mostly wiped out by the Assyrians. So these Assyrians were some bad guys. And now they're surrounding Jerusalem and forcing them to shelter in place. They're under a siege. They can't go anywhere. So whether, whether we're good or bad, bad things happen. Being good, though, is gooder, <laughs> if, if, if you would follow me, I, it's gooder, uh, it's gooder to be good, because it keeps us in line with God, who's always good. And so, even though, after all that he had so faithfully done, they were under attack, he had still faithfully done everything. And that's important. And so, we're, we're kind of being forced to shelter in place, though we hadn't done anything wrong. And many of us are serving the Lord, following the Lord, wanting to walk with God, reading his word, praying, uh, believing the best in our land, believing the best for people. And now this happens to us. It's not fair. But God's still with us. And the fact that we have been faithful is still to our credit and to the credit of God. So if we're faithful... And the enemy comes, at least we know that it's not because of judgment or wrath. At least we know that God's not upset with us. And so when bad things come and you're doing well, don't be discouraged. Because you've still done well. And it's gooder to be good. Now, what this can mean, though, is that not that God's upset with us when bad things come, but he's testing us for our own good. Anytime God tests us, it's for our good. It's for our good. It's, it, it, sometimes it's punitive. Sometimes we are tested or sometimes bad things happen because we've done bad things. I mean, we, we can't discount the scriptures from Galatians chapter 6 that says a man reaps what he sows. If he sows to the, to, the, uh, to the spirit, he will reap from the spirit. If he sows to the natural or to the flesh, he will reap from the flesh. We do reap what we sow. And so they're not reaping this bad action because they've been bad. They're being tested for their good. God loves to test us, to strengthen us, to give us courage. So God's goal here is not to make us happy in life, but to transform us. God wants to change us. And God wanted to do some more transformation in Hezekiah's life and also in the lives of Judah. And it's as if God's saying, look, you've done well in following me. Now I want to take you to the next level. And I want to tell you, if you're following the Lord, you're doing well to follow him. But don't be surprised if God doesn't want to take you to a new level, a stronger, deeper level in faith and walk with him. And that's good. It'll always be for our good to do that. And so God's goal is to transform us. How do we do this? I'm going to show you two things that Hezekiah did. And uh, we do this, and we will do this. I, I want to encourage you to do this. Number one, this is what they did, and what we can do as well. Cutting off the enemy. We do this by cutting off the enemy. That's how God transforms us. That's how God tests us. He's, he wants us to cut off the enemy. Now, my wife Joni, uh, a couple of weeks ago, she's a little bit uh, ahead of me in, the, in her Bible reading. And, um, and so she, she was reading this story and, and she said, oh, I saw these things in Hezekiah and she's going to be preaching on Hezekiah and, and some more uh, for, for the ladies coming up or for anybody that wants to watch it on, on um, uh, YouTube or on our Facebook page. But she had talked to me about some of the things that Hezekiah had done. And just to prove that I listened, I stole a couple of things from her. So I want you to know that I do listen to my wife. Uh, so husbands, take note. All right. I got that on you. Uh, but first of all, I want to cut off the enemy. Here's what, here's what Hezekiah did. Okay. When Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib, was Sennacherib was the, was the king of the Assyrian army. Uh, when, he, when Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib had come and that he intended to make war on Jerusalem, though they had done nothing to the Assyrians, the Assyrians had just invaded them. They did nothing wrong. 
They blocked, here's what they did, they blocked all the springs and the streams that flowed through the land. And here's what, they're, here's what they're thinking is, why should the kings of Assyria come and find plenty of water? So they cut off the enemy, from the enemy, something the enemy would need in order for the enemy to be sustained. Which is very smart. See, the reason for cutting off the flow of water was to make it more difficult for the enemy. We want to make it difficult for the enemy to invade our life. But we can't help being under siege. We can't help being sheltered in place. But we can preserve our own life. We can, while we're sheltering in place, cut the enemy off from invading further into our lives. And I talked last week about sometimes it's very discouraging in this time. And we can give in to the enemy and allow him more access to our life because we're frustrated in our current situation. Don't get so frustrated in your current situation that you abandon your principles. We don't want to do that. We don't want to abandon our faith in God. So without a source of water, the Assyrians would be in danger. They would, they would have to leave eventually to get water. And so don't feed the enemy. Don't give the enemy more strength or access into your life. So what can be cut off from us, from our own lives, that is making the enemy stronger? Some of the things we're watching. Uh, over the last, I'd say, week, week and a half, as I've gotten more frustrated with all of this, I have followed the news less. I'm not watching as much news. I watch a little bit here and there to keep abreast of what's going on. But I'm not watching it hour after hour after hour because it can be depressing. It can also make you anger, angry and it can fuel what the enemy wants to do. And that is to discourage us with helplessness and to discourage us with hopelessness. And so, guarding your own heart and mind is so important. And so there's things that I'm trying to cut out of my life that is bringing me down. And I'm wanting to bring into my life things that, that, that help sustain me spiritually. Be careful what you're watching. Be careful what you're feeding on. Be careful of what's flowing in and around you. See, if we block the stream... There's a lot of things people are streaming right now. If we block the stream, we will stop the feed. And there's, I want to starve the enemy out of my life. So that means that I have to, there's sometimes that we even have to cut people out of our life. Remember last week I talked about, you want to be, you want to be a lubricator, not an agitator. Agitators need to be cut from your life. Now you're saying, well, wait a minute, I'm married to one. Okay, that's a little different. Okay, so you have to guard yourself in different ways if you, if you are forced to be with an agitator. We want, to, we want to encourage and have more and more lubricators in our life, people that, people that bring a, a, a positive life and are life givers, not life takers from us. And that's what agitators do is they, they rob you of life. They rob your peace. They rob your joy. So be careful. And, and if you can, there's things that can be cut off of your life that will actually improve your sheltering in place. So we do this by cutting off the enemy. And number two, we do this by fixing what's broken. And this is what Hezekiah did. So they block off all the streams of water, the flow. They cut off the stream so that the enemy had a more difficult time. But then they started to fix what was broken. See, then he worked hard. This is hard work. Guarding your spiritual life is hard work. So many people just kind of mail it in. And then the next thing you know, they have drifted farther from the Lord by their inactivity, by their procrastination. It's hard work to stay close to the Lord, but boy, is it worth it. Because anything that's worth building is hard work. He worked hard repairing all the broken sections of the wall and building towers on it. Then, hold it, 
He built another wall outside the one and reinforced the supporting terraces of the city of David. So he's fixing walls, he's adding walls, he's putting up terraces, supporting terraces and towers on top of the wall. And then he also makes a large number of weapons and shields. Why does he do all this? For safety. For safety. He's, he's guarding himself. He's working hard to guard his heart and mind. Or in this case, their case, people, actual lives. But in our case, we can do things that can add to the safety of our heart and mind. What we watch, what we listen to, what we, what we you know, uh, feel. We can guard ourselves. We can build walls. We can build walls of protection. So he repairs the broken walls. What's, what's broken in your life? This is a great time as, as we are in this time of pause to a degree to repair our marriages, to repair relationships, um, to seek out people that we need to seek out and make things right. Forgiveness. Forgiveness is so important and so crucial in, in having peace in our life, tranquility. So he repairs the broken walls. And he builds towers and terraces for better visibility. He wanted to see things more clearly. For me, the towers and terraces in my life, reading the Word and prayer. Reading the Word and praying helped me to see life a little more clearly. And then he added more walls. And he made more weapons and shields. There's things we can add to our life. I pray that right now as you're sitting in your home or in your car and you're, and you're either listening to this message or watching this message that it's adding to your life. There's things we can do to add to our life. This is what it means to us. One, fix your relationship with God and with others. Fix your relationship with your wife or your husband. Fix your relationship with your kids. Fix your relationship with an employee or a co-worker or a boss. And most importantly, fix your relationship with God. You do that with confession. You do that through prayer. You do that through thanksgiving. Those are the things that fix our relationship with God, is, is being grateful to Him, um, talking to Him about our sin, being open, honest, and transparent with the, with the Lord, fixes our relationship with Him. Being open and transparent with our loved ones fixes relationships with loved ones. So this is what we can do. We can fix some things. We can also, and here's why, because a strong faith and a good family are real safeguards for many things in our life. When you have a strong faith in God and you have good relationships with family and good friends, great safeguards for your life. Then he surrounds himself, or we can, uh, by adding more walls, you can, you, you can be surrounded by godly people and try to add to them. Once again, going to the, the agitator lubricator example. You can add and be surrounded by lubricators, not agitators. Agitators will destroy your faith, will destroy your harmony, your peace, your unity. And, and that's something, I want you to know from Proverbs chapter 6, that's something God hates. It's someone who stirs up problems amongst brothers. Someone who, who, who causes division. Those are agitators. They aren't supporting walls. They aren't, they aren't safeguards for your life. In fact, they allow the enemy access. People like that. And there's, there's things that we can watch on TV that cause agitation. That are, that are agitators, not lubricators. There's, there's news feeds that we can watch. There's Twitter feeds that we can see and read. There's things that we can see on Facebook that agitate us. Start cutting those things out. You don't need to be agitated. We don't, none of us need that. So guard yourself. Fix what's broken. Add the right people to your life, the right messages to your life. The Word of God, godly people. And then handle your weapon. The weapon in this case is God's Word. Know God's Word. That's why I have the word handle in quotations. In handling, you've got to know your weapon in order to handle it. And the more you know the Word and turn to God's Word, you'll get a different flow and a different stream in your life because the Word of God is purifying and it's, it's, it's refreshing to our soul. It's living water. So when Hezekiah did all that, I'm going to give you the end of the story. Uh, Sennacherib came and they, they, they mocked 
the people of Jerusalem and, 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 and those worshiping God. They claimed that God had sent them to destroy them. They told the people at the wall, don't listen to Hezekiah. He's a deceiver. He's a, he's a, he's a liar. Uh, he's terrible. He's going to lead you astray. And then they said, just come out. Just come out and, and, and serve us and you'll be okay. You come out and kneel to us and you'll be okay. And the people remained silent on the, land, uh, on the walls. They wouldn't, they wouldn't engage with the enemy. And they defied God. They blasphemed God. They said all kinds of horrible things about God. And here's what Isaiah the prophet said. Isaiah the prophet told Hezekiah, don't worry about this. Don't worry about this. God's going to fight for you. God's going to take care of this guy. Because he's defied the armies of the living God. God's going to deal with him. And God did. God did. An angel of the Lord went out, put to death 185,000 Assyrian warriors. An angel of the Lord. One angel. God, after all they had so faithfully done, had their backs. He has ours too. He's never going to leave us or forsake us. It wasn't long after this encounter with Hezekiah and Sennacherib's blaspheme against the Lord that God raised up Nebuchadnezzar's father who defeated the Assyrians pretty much wiped them off the land God has our back and here's here's other words that were told to the people and I want to I want to close with this Hezekiah said this to the people this is what he got from Isaiah the prophet, the word of God. Do not be afraid or discouraged. I want to tell you again today, do not be afraid or discouraged. I know this is a discouraging times. These are times of fear. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of the king of Assyria. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of what's happening in our land right now. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of what's happening in our world right now. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of the uncertainty of the times that we live. Because, here's the reason, there is a greater power with us than with him or with them. Will you bow your heads? Heavenly Father, you are the power greater within us. Greater is he who is in you than, in, than he that is in the world, John tells us. You are greater, God. We entrust ourselves to you. And Lord, we aren't perfect. We've done wrong. But Lord, by and large, we want to follow you. We want to serve you. We want to celebrate you. Uh, we want to keep you strong and alive in our life. We want to stay close to you. And we want to stay faithful to you. And so what we're facing now, I don't believe is judgment against us, but it's a test. And I want to stay true to the test. And I want to be transformed by your, by your mighty power, Lord God. Because at the end of the day, Lord, I want to be more like you in the way I think, in the way I talk, in the way I act. I want to be more like Jesus in everything about me. I want to follow in your footsteps as Peter invites us to do. He left us an example, Peter said, that we should follow in his steps, your steps, Jesus. Be that power within us, God, and deliver us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for sharing today and with us, and uh, God bless you as you uh, are in your homes. Uh, keep praying that, that, that one day we'll be able to gather again together as a church family, church body. In the meantime, Stay close to God. Thank you.